Hi, it's me again. And what we're going to explore in this video is when intubating, what structures do you look for? So with oral endotracheal tube intubation, or if you're doing nasal intubation, when you start visualizing the structures of the pharynx, as well as the structures around the larynx and structures of the internal larynx, what are you really looking for when you're trying to guide that endotracheal tube through the glottic opening and into the patient's trachea? So hopefully in this video, you'll be able to identify some of the things that we use to aid in intubating the patient when we're looking down the patient's airway before we put the endotracheal tube in. So to, to do this video, uh, what we're going to be doing is using the glide scope to help us see what's inside the mannequin. And we'll be using an adult mannequin for this as well. And what I'll do is I'll kind of step by step show you the anatomy as we go deeper and deeper into the patient's airway before we get to that glottic area. So I'm going to turn the camera over to the glide scope screen and we'll zoom in on that. There we go. Zooming in. There. Turn the glide scope on. And I'll grab the glide scope itself now. Come here, glide scope. All right. So here's our mannequin. I'm going to place the glide scope inside the patient. Now, obviously, you can kind of see there's the patient's nose, lips, right here, the teeth. Now, as we go midline, you can see there's the hard palate right over here. Right behind the hard palate is the soft palate. And just below that, as we progress in, there's the uvula and the platoglossal arches. Behind that, there's the pharynx. So this is the posterior wall of the oral pharynx. And as we go a little bit deeper yet, switch the style out around, here's the tongue, right there. That's the tongue. Go a little bit deeper, that's the tip of the epiglottis. And in between the base of the tongue and the epiglottis, that space in there is the vollecula. So if you're using a Macintosh blade, you want the Macintosh blade to wind up right inside here. And essentially when you're using glide scope, that's roughly the same spot you want the glide scope tip to reach as well. But remember, unlike a Macintosh blade with the glide scope, you're going in midline. With the Macintosh blade, you're going in on the patient's right side and then scooping the tongue out of the way into the patient's left side so you can visualize the glottis. So if we progress a little bit further down yet, there you can really see the epiglottis. There. The blade tips in the vollecula. Now here's the structures of the trait larynx that we're looking for. Right over here you'll see the vocal cords, one there, one there, and the space in between here is your glottis. So when you're intubating the patient, what you want the endotracheal tube to do is to pass between the vocal cords when the vocal cords are open, right, and place the endotracheal tube down here in the trachea. So that's the trachea down here. You can kind of see with the intubation head those tracheal rings at the top. So that is the trachea. You don't want the endotracheal tube to go down here because this area here, that is the esophagus. Okay, so once you've got this visualization right over here, what you need to do is grab your endotracheal tube and then insert the endotracheal tube into the patient's airway like so. And you can kind of see where the cuff is against the cords right here. Further advance the tube another centimeter to two centimeters, and two centimeters is ideal like so. And then when you've got the endotracheal tube in the proper position, of course, remove the stylet while maintaining the same position of the endotracheal tube. At that point in time, your laryngoscope can come out, the cuff can be inflated while holding onto the tube attached to the manual resuscitator. You switched over bag valve to ventilation to bag valve mass ventilation or bag valve mass ventilation to bag valve to ventilation. Now you can ventilate the patient. Now I also kind of want to show you what it might look like on a real person. So I'm going to take out the blade that I just used with the glide scope for placing it down that mannequin and we're going to attach a brand new never been used blade before and we're going to hello we're going to place it on me well as far as I can go in now I don't have any numbing at all I have taken no topical anesthetics or analgesics I haven't had any xylocaine or nothing nothing's 
nothing's been sprayed back there. I haven't ingested anything. So it's au naturel. So we'll see how far we can get this glide scope in my oral cavity before I probably start to gag. So here we go. In my nose, my lips, and you can kind of see I haven't shaved for a while. And well, that's because it's November. So I might be not shaving because of November. So here we go. A little less talk and a little bit more action. Oh, oh. Whew. that didn't feel so good. So obviously, let's zoom out. <laughs> obviously, I have a gag reflex and uh, can't place the glide scope blade any further than that to show you my natural anatomy. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll try to do something like that, like some of the other guys on YouTube. But uh, anyways, so for now, when you're intubating your patient, kind of do or kind of look for what I showed you on this video. And if you can find all that stuff, you're good to go with the intubation. Remember, baby step your way in. Don't be too aggressive with it, especially if you're a rookie at doing so, because you might go a little bit too far into the patient's airway. And before you know, you, before you know it, you've got the tip of the blade inside the patient's esophagus, and you have no idea what you're looking at. So make sure you get down to that level where you can see the epiglottis and the vallecula. And again, Macintosh blade, tip goes inside the vallecula upwards and forward motion to reveal the structures of the glottic area so you can intubate the patient properly. And if you're using a Miller blade, that's the straight blade, the straight blade goes into the patient midline, directly midline, looking for the epiglottis. And then you use the tip of that blade to hook the epiglottis and lift the whole airway upwards and forward so you can see the glottic openings you can intubate, All right? Two different blades, two different techniques, but at least you know what, air, what airway anatomy you need to look for. Let me know what you think about this video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending on what you thought of it. And if you have any comments, please let me know. Any questions, let me know as well. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please do so uh, and let me know about that as well. If you get a chance, also subscribe to my channel. Take care, have a great day from the Great White North. George, out.